Hey, John. Let's see if that works. Good morning. Hey, how's it going? Uh, you know, I'm actually traveling this week, so. Wow, what's that like? I haven't traveled in ages. <laughs> it is kind of surreal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm only in LA, so I guess that counts as a third world country, but man. Depends really on your perspective. Bad. There are some people I'm sure love LA. Yes. Yeah, all the people I know who live here. Yes. Uh, I, uh, <sighs> Californians definitely have their own little perspective on the world. But I should stop at that since we're being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I call it La La Land. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's the funny thing studying studying the you know from a neuroscience, behavioral science perspective, the the extremes. It's it's literally the same brain mechanisms, just reacting in different ways. Um, mm -hmm. and, and but the logic is the same the, the extremists it's a it's a weird creepy thing elaborate a little when you talk about extremes what, what in particular are you referring to so if you think about the the, the, the most extreme people and like on the left versus the extreme on the right mm -hmm. they're they're the, the mental patterns the logic illogic however you want to call it they're 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 subjective justifications mm. are, um, it, 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 they're the same it's just the path they take in their logic to justify it and what they react to emotionally um, are are where it differs but the, the actual subjectivity and the brain processing is the same so it's, gotcha. it's a really creepy thing yep yeah because i've often heard people talk about how uh the the political spectrum actually is a circle yeah. and yeah so that's interesting <laughs> yeah. hey, all right enough of that are, fun are, stuff are we talking about politics before <laughs> no 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 it, not, not specific it just this the, the concept of people's perception of it how's that oh, that's fair that's fair <laughs> all right so that was david who clearly wants to talk about politics no no i uh, don't not during work no uh, tommy you there Yo, Christian. Hey, good morning. Hello. And then Timur. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I will be happy though when the whole election's over just because I'm just tired of the, the text messages telling me to vote and the emails from from both sides, it, it, which is really fascinating that I actually get from both ends. I have no idea why. You'd think I'd only get it from one side, but nope, I get it from both. <laughs> it's weird. And and all the people who want to influence your vote one way or the other. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. Hey, Doc. Right. Oh, hello. Hey, Christoph. Uh, da -da -da. And let's see, Brian, are you there? Hey, Doug. Hello. Um, but I'm um, right. I have kind of a short of agenda today, so hopefully we can make it quick. However, we do need to start talking about the interop doc. I did make a couple of changes earlier today, just some suggestions. Um, we do at least have something to talk about, but I didn't realize it, but November 2nd is coming up really fast. So, uh, Simon, are you there? Um, yes. Hello. Gotcha. Thank you.
Hey, Klaus. Hi, Doug. How are you doing? Great. You? Good. Good. Yep. Doing good. Hi, Ginger. Hey, Doug. And Manuel, are you there? Hi, yeah. All right. All right, let's give another minute or two. I think we have somebody new on the call. Lu Dang, are you there? Hi. Hello. Do you want to be associated with a company? If you don't have to, if you don't want to, and just just for roll call, we tend to associate. Oh, with companies. Uh, I'm from Google. Ah, okay. That one I can spell. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. And Slinky, are you there? Hello. Hello. Hey, Doug. This is Mark. Oh, hey, Mark. How's it going? Awesome. Good. Oh, hey, Mark, before I forget, um, uh, the CNCF sent us a note asking for uh, a paragraph or so <clears throat> if we wanted to give them a status update for some for something they're doing for KubeCon. I was going to write something up, um, but I was going to, I wanted to send it off to you just to do wordsmithing and stuff like that. So keep an eye out for a Slack message or email or something from me later today. Okay. Cool. Thank I you. I guess I missed it, so uh, I'll I'll look in my email for it. Yeah, it, it's I can't remember when they sent it, but it was a little bit ago. I just yeah, it comes it. out on the if you're in the CNCF uh, maintainers email distribution oh, list. Yeah. yeah, got it. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Cool. All right, Eric, are you there? Hello. Hello. All right. And Anish, are you there? Hey, Doug. Hello. All right. Give another 30 seconds or so, then we'll get started. Hey, but Ginger, did you notice that they reopened the office hours thing? Oh, no, I didn't see. Yeah, I got lucky because I completely missed it the first time. So as you said, all, this, all the time slots were basically gone, except there was like a late, late Friday afternoon was still available. So I thought, okay, fine, I'll, I'll grab that one. And then uh, almost immediately after I signed up for that, I get some emails saying that they reopened it. And I went back and checked and I got really good times. Um, so I ended up huh. canceling the Friday one. So yeah, you may want to just double check in I'll case you go didn't look. get good times. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I got, I got lucky that I messed up. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Three after, why don't we go ahead and get started? Let's see, we have 17 people. All right, so um, just a reminder, I don't see Lance or Scott, so I can't nag them about the AI, so I'll keep moving forward. Anything from the community people wanna bring up that's not on the agenda? Okay, not hearing it. Um, so as I mentioned just now, we do have office hours. I was able to snag some, I, I think some pretty good times. Um, uh, as we get closer to the date, I'll be looking for people to volunteer to hang out there. Last time it was fairly easy. I don't even think we had anybody show up. So we'll maybe looking for one or two people just to hang out there to answer questions in case people do show up. Um, be looking for names later. So be thinking about whether you can take either or both of those times, be appreciated. Um, but it should be light duty. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else for KubeCon that we need to mention. I can't think of anything. So. Um, I did submit the video and PowerPoint slides for the cloud event session that Clemens and I did. And later today, Timur and I will be recording the one for the serverless working group session, and then we'll submit that today. And I think that's it in terms of our sessions for, um, for our organization. Can anybody think of anything else worth mentioning that I'm not mentioning that the group may need to be aware of? Okay, good, not hearing it. Um, SDK call, none this week, but we will have a, a interop call immediately following this one. Uh, with, with November 2nd coming up, we really need to get on the ball in terms of filling out the, uh, the scenario doc uh, so people know what they want to code to. I did make some suggested changes uh, right before this call, so we do have at least something to talk about. 
And as a reminder, we'll start that call immediately following this one, um, no later than 1 p.m. Eastern, but probably earlier since we have a short agenda today. All right. And Timur, anything you want to mention relative to the workflow subgroup? Oh, hi. Um, yeah, for the specification and the, we're currently discussing uh, the, the function or service invocation definitions. We're going through them and, and revising. Uh, and also we're moving forward to, to hopefully have the, uh, a new release by <laughs> KubeCon. So yeah, those are the two things. Thanks. Okay, any questions for him? All right, cool. Yeah, being able to announce a new release at KubeCon would be really good. All right, into the PRs. Before we jump into that, any other topics we want to add to the agenda before, that I might have forgotten about or anything really important? All right, let's jump into some real work then, PRs. Manuel, you're on the call. Would you like to talk to this one? Oh, this one's easy. You want to talk to this one quickly? Yeah, it's very easy. Um, the JSON schema doesn't follow the specification. As you can see, the data schema definition has a min length of one, which makes it uh, required parameters. But the specification says data schema should be an optimal parameter. So, yeah. Okay. So just removing that field. Any questions or concerns about that? It seems like a typo to me. Actually, I think this, uh, this, this has a... It cannot be empty. It, it, it cannot be empty. The fact that it's optional. If you look at my PR, this it updates this. So min field min length one is correct because that's that says if it's specified, then it has to have a length. Ah, yeah. Exactly. What the change should be is uh, the type. Well, I think this is fine actually. So the is, is is there a field in JSON schema to indicate whether it's optional or not? So th yes, there is a required section, uh, I think above this, which doesn't have data schema in there. Ah. This just it. means uh, if that field exists, it must have a length. If it doesn't exist, it doesn't matter. Okay, and so the data content type can be empty? Sorry. The um, data schema can be, uh, it, should, it, it should not exist in the payload with uh, an empty string. And that's what this line is saying. So this is correct. Yeah. Good catch. Yeah, yeah, we had the same problem discussed uh, a few days ago. And actually, the format URI will make sure of the validation anyway. So an empty string would not comply to the format URI. So okay. if you want to omit it, we need to re remove the data schema property completely, or we allow null values. I have a follow-up to add uh, accept null values too, so that will that will solve that. Yeah, but Manuel, oh, Slinky, your hands up. I think it would be better to keep the mean length one because in the latest JSON schema draft, uh, uh, format is an optional validation keyword. So. Okay, so Manuel, would you agree that we actually should keep it? Okay, I just noticed that all the required fields do have the min length one, and um, the ones optional do not have it. So I thought this was an obvious one, but okay, we we'd also want to add null value acceptance for all the optional ones, right? And maybe then the min lengths uh, would apply to all or none of them uh, having this field. Scott, do you want to take a look at your PR right now, to, since it's kind of related? Yeah, sure. I think the, the the mistake is that we need the min length one on all fields that the spec says cannot be empty if specified. So did you you did modify? Yeah, you modified the JSON schema. Yeah. So you added null to all these because they're optional, right? Yeah, I think the the data content type def needs a min length one too. Yeah, we could do that as a follow up. So does that address your concern, Manuel? Oh, yeah, go. go um, yep. Yeah. 
So now, actually, I thought that um, we had the discussion on null values, and which means we can have them. Okay, so not having anything. I I think I'll I'll understand. Okay. <laughs> So, but then, yeah, I, I can have a data schema def, uh, a data schema that has, I don't know, this, uh, the data content type with a length of zero. And I that is so. uh, not being null or absent from the spec. But, okay. I think Scott's saying that this one is missing a min length equals one. But in general, we need a min length equals one because no, we we're not we don't allow empty strings. That's right. If specified, right. so if it exists in the body of the the payload or in the envelope, then it needs to have a value. So I think what we're saying is this PR should be closed. This PR, at least relative to this stuff needs to be accepted, but a follow on PR should add min length equals one to this thing. Right, Scott? Yeah, I think that's true. Is that also true for the time definition? I think because the, the date time format, I think that requires it to be non empty string, I think. If we if we want to be consistent, we could do min length one. Yeah, we, we should we should do that. Again, because in the next uh, uh, spec of uh, using schema, uh, this is, uh, the format is optional. So even if there is the time, uh, the validator can can tell you, look, I don't know anything about formats. So okay, uh, hold on. Taking some notes here. Okay, so let's let's do this one at a time. So going back to this one, is there any objection to closing this PR with no action? Okay, so closing since. Okay, no objection. We can close that. Now, and since let's go ahead and tackle this one first. So Scott, why don't you talk to this one overall? Let me hide the comments for a sec. Can we just talk to this one overall? Yeah. And so the general idea is that this only changes how we interpret the wire format, not, it doesn't change anything else. So it, it's really about uh, pushing the, uh, the cloud event shape onto the wire as a JSON object and pulling it off, but not the, the object at rest. So like not the in-memory version of it or the conical form. And then I added some examples of valid uh, on the wire cloud event objects. Yeah, um, yeah this, this makes it perfectly clear right here. And then you add some, this is just- That's, some, that's the prettier right. auto stuff. Yep, and then here are the examples that you talked about. I just think there is a small typo in equivalent. I'm, I'm sorry, Remy, you're really hard to hear. Can you speak up? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, one sec. Uh, yeah, I was just saying, so, sorry. It's much, much better, thank you. <laughs> uh, I think there's just one small typo. It's my typo week. Uh, in uh, equivalent, uh, it's written equivalent in this peer uh, for what I read. Like if you go up upper, uh, like, uh, yeah, here, if I'm, if I'm correct, uh, it's the second I should be uh, A. Dun, 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 dun. Nope. Scott, Scott, you okay with, the, with making that change? I quit. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know what, what's nice about this is that opens the door for us to say, hey, while you're in there anyway, you can add the min length equals one stuff. Yeah, sure. I can, I can do that. No problem. Okay. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Good catch there, Remy. <laughs> yeah. It's just my idea. <laughs> my week, you know, I have a small PR with another type. <laughs> which... Yes. Okay, Emmanuel, is your hand up? Is that old or new? Oh, so that's old. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so let's see if there's anything else here worth talking about. That was just prettier things, and then we have down here. So, does everybody agree with these changes? And um, and of course, the addition of min length equals one on this one and time def. I assume Scott, you'll check the other ones too, like base def sixty four. 
Yeah, I need to double check that because it might actually be valid to specify it, but not put any value in there because that would just be a, an empty buffer. Okay. If I'm assuming that if all it, that if, if Scott goes ahead and adds the min length equals one to these things, that everybody's okay with that, we can approve that here. However, Scott, if you find that there's another gotcha that we're not thinking of, um, we'll hold off till next week to, to approve it, if that's okay. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So anybody else have any questions or comments on this one with those changes, meaning the min, min length equals one and then the, the I to A letter change up top. Any objections? All right, cool. So hold on. So we don't need to follow on PR. I'll fix that in a minute, but all right, cool. All right. I can't remember who wrote this one. Anish, cool. All right. Let me Okay, so hide that for a sec. All right, Anish, would you like to talk to this one? Yeah, it basically sums up our discussions in the previous weeks where we were talking about having certain uh, additional fields in the spec, uh, in the webhook spec, I guess. And then we decided that we really don't want to get into the security business, at least in terms of our specifications. So I just added it into Primer that let's avoid vendor specific authorization principles, at least in, as part of our spec, and let the implementer take care of these things as extension attributes if possible. Okay, thank you. I know there's one comment and then I'll get to that in a sec, but any mm -hmm. questions or comments about the overall direction that he's going here? Any concerns with adding it? It's It sounds a little bit like closing the door on uh, security. You mean if we choose to add it later? Um, what is it entirely, it's, it's, I think the idea was to give a little bit of guidance. Um, so this is stating that every vendor has a different authorization model, uh, hence Scout events will not now or in the future, as the impression I get from the text, uh, specify any authorization. Would it make you feel more comfortable if we said, instead of will not, it says something more like currently does not or something like that? Because yeah, I, I think, think it would, yeah. Okay, because I think technically what he wrote here is accurate. The spec does not or will not do that. Yeah. But it, and maybe it's the word will that's throwing you as implying a future statement. So if we change that to does not, would that help? Yeah. Um, Anish, would you be okay with that? Uh, I would really expect Clemens to pitch in over that. <laughs> <sort of. laughs> Because we, it was like a very clear thing from his side that we, do we really want to get into security business as part of the spec? But yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm all right with it. Well, if, if you'd like, what we could do is do whatever wordsmithing we want on the call here, and we can say it's conditionally approved, but you'd want Clemens to, to weigh in first. And if he's okay with it, then we can let it go if everybody else on the call is okay with that. Yep. yep. Okay. So in that so case... Should we, this yep. is Daniel. Uh, it only talks about authorization model. Um, I think we were talking also about the integrity of the event. Because whenever we talk about signature, there are two things, right? The sender authentication comes and then uh, the integrity of the uh, payload. I mean, correct so, me if I'm wrong, the data integrity is still kind of falls under the authorization principle, right? Because you want to check whether your data is correct or not as part of uh, update process. I think that's one of the steps for authorizing the right update operation, I guess. And, and uh, so I, I always thought authorization is more about access. No, no, that's authentication. So authorization. No, is, authentication is not about access. Authorization is about access and Basically, what we are talking about is the integrity. Okay, I'm up for options and opinions. Well, I, I so Sanjay, you're suggesting that we probably need to enhance this text to include 
the integrity side of things to say we don't deal with that either, right? Yeah, if we are not going to do, yeah, uh, but uh, I think um, I would say, you know, extend it for the integrity part also. And, and Doug, you know, if, if we have to, let is there an, uh, uh, a way where, you know, the course pack would not say anything about uh, the integrity of the event, but if we want to give uh, example where, you know, there are use cases where in webhooks you want to send event out and you want to offer, uh, uh, you know, uh, an up show an approach where how we can, uh, one can validate the integrity of the club, uh, event payload and event envelope. That would be uh, some, is it possible to link some documentation from cloud events uh, site for that, those kinds of use cases? Or we would not even do that. So I, I my personal take on it is, Oh, actually, hold on a minute. Eric's hand is up. Let, let him go first. Eric, go ahead. Why don't you go ahead and have your talk? I'm going to take us on a different thread here. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, so my personal point of view is I think it makes sense for us to talk about things like authorization, encryption, or, or, or uh, integrity, and, and talk about how we're not going to touch that stuff. Um, when it comes to pointing to other things that people can leverage as an add-on to our specification, I think it's okay to talk about it in general terms to say, hey, just because we don't do it, that is, doesn't mean you can't add it. I just get a little bit nervous about pointing to particular things because I don't want to look like we're endorsing one particular thing over another. Um, now, if we, if we include a list of things to say, hey, by the way, there's X, Y, and Z out there. And, and it's very clear that we just happen to pick a random set of three things, then that, that would, I'd be okay with. But if we only point to one, that would make me more nervous, if that makes any sense. Uh, okay, got it. But that's just me. I don't know how other people feel. No, I understand the argument about endorsing part of it, so. Yeah. Uh, and, and also from the data integrity point of view, I think because somebody talked about ETAG down the line. So it completely depends on what fields you want to send as part of your data payload, right? And over there, you can always send ETAG, which shows I, the integrity. I think, of Anish, the... we spoke about ETAG for item potency, I think. Yeah. Right? So it's a different use case. But still does the job, at least in my opinion. But yeah, let's, let's also discuss this again in detail. Okay. Klaus, your hand is up. Yes, so if I recall correctly, in San Diego, we even had uh, the integrity topic on our list of potential activities for the future. So I, I think it's good that there is this distinction between authorization and integrity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, lots of hands now. Eric, you're back on the list. <laughs> yeah, I uh, just wanted you to be able to speak your piece. Um, there, there's two comments that I have, and one is that uh, uh, mentioning vendors seems like uh, maybe a, a red herring is not the right word, but um, not quite as direct as it could be because it doesn't say anything about, say, the the open source or you know other kind of standardized uh, implementations that there might be to solve for this problem. But the other piece is that I kind of assumed, and and I've been a bit lazy, so I apologize, but I kind of assumed that when this work was getting done that they'd look into the primer because I'm quite certain that there's a piece that addresses some of this in there. And I would have expected that to either have been uh, modified or removed um, in uh, preference for this. But um, anyway, that's my piece. I was actually wondering whether we already have something in this topic already, I, but like you, I got lazy and haven't actually checked. So, well, maybe we should do that now thought I did, but yeah, I think I probably <laughs> missed it too. <laughs> anyway, while, while we're bringing it up, Manuel, you, your hands up. Uh, yeah, if I recall correctly, we were talking about the signatures and signatures can be used for authentication or authorization, but I think um, the integrity check was the use case being discussed. So apart from the authorization that is done with the webhook. And um, using this signature for the integrity of the message, we were, uh, we discussed like three options. Either we wanted to uh, also save the integrity of the cloud events envelope, uh, in which case uh, we said that this is not a model for cloud events, I think. 
so it's out of scope there. But then uh, there was also the idea that maybe the data part, so it could be entirely left to the application uh, that is within the structure uh, sent in the data field. Or if wanted um, to write an extension that carries the signature in the envelope for the data transmitted in the data field. So I wasn't sure if Clement said, said something on the um, consistency of this approach, but I think there was something that Scott had um, suggested. And when when we said we wanted to give some guidance in the primer of how to do that, I thought uh, this would sort of be, be put in the text, like uh, a user could choose to solve this entirely at the application level. Um, and maybe if we say uh, it shouldn't be um, integrity of the envelopes, then uh, this, this may be a decision to, to, to say this should be excluded from future attempts. Okay, um, Sanjay, your hands up. Yeah, I, I agree with Manuel. I think uh, the out of those three approaches, right, I, I, I did write a comment that often, you know, you have to sign because the cloud event envelope has context, which is important when you sign the payroll. Uh, so in my opinion, manual, uh, you know, the third approach only makes sense when you are doing the integrity check. Uh, but I agree that we should list those uh, three things uh, in, in a, you know, separately. And uh, we shouldn't say that, uh, you know, you should just, uh, however you want to sign the payload and you, uh, you know, go ahead and use whatever approach you want to use. Um, I think uh, parts of the envelope are important uh, whenever you sign the payload. So our guidance should be kind of, uh, uh, you know, include that part that, you know, we understand that part of the uh, envelope is also important when you sign any payload. And if you want to do it, you can do it this way. And I'm not talking about the core spec. I'm talking about the other revenue where we you know we want to discuss this use cases there we should uh, take all three options and uh, uh, you know provide recommendation accordingly. Okay. So, um, so Anish, you, you've got a lot of feedback. How would you like to proceed? <laughs> um, I would like the comments to be on over the PR so that I can address on them. And then, um, how I see is at least uh, currently we probably don't want to deal with the integrity issue, data integrity issue right now till we start addressing it as a topic. So how about we simply say right now that currently we do not mandate it. And then we're gonna address this issue overall once we try to pin down the data integrity topic in general, because this com completely deals with us not having a mandate towards an authorization principle or a security model, at least right now and then we would probably address it. It's not like we are not gonna address it, but uh, this is something I think it needs a bit more deeper discussions down the line. Right, but it, it, I wanna make sure I understood what you're saying there. I, um, are you going to update your pull request to make it clear that basically we're, we're, we're not touching security and that includes authorization, integrity checks and- Yeah, I would things. say so, okay. I would okay. say so, yeah. Okay, okay, so we're looking for an updated PR then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so people, please add your comments to the PR if you have not done so already. So that, um, so Anish has all the feedback uh, written down and get you can get your thoughts out there. Okay. And also uh, another last thing, Doug, authorization yep. versus authorization. <laughs> yeah. I noticed you changed it here. <laughs> you didn't catch it here though. I, I noticed that. And then there was a comment about how the, the E here needs to be capitalized, but yeah, we, can, yeah. we can work on that later. <laughs> Those are minor things. I think that was the only comment in there. Let me show, just make sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so yes, please everybody leave your comments on there. Uh, even if you set it on the call here, please leave your comments in the issue itself so that uh, so Anish can remember it and, and take it into account as he edits the text. Okay. Yep. So thank you very much, Anish, for that. Um, no hold on. Cool. All right, so let's go back over here for a sec. Get rid of you. This is only closed. Let's refresh here because Scott just said he updated it. All right, so let's go and see what he did. Do, 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 do. 
All right, so here are the new edits. Min length one, nulls, I think were there before, min length one here. Might be easier to just see the, that one single diff. Oh, do do do. Uh, Is that going to do it? Or do I have to click on the right hand side? Click on the hash. There. Oh, wait, that did it. No, okay. Let's click on the hash. There we go. So he got the A, and then he did this. Does that look right to people based upon what we talked about before? I read the spec and it seems like uh, data base 64 as an empty string is technically valid base 64 encoded data. So I left it alone. Interesting. There's no requirement that it has to have a min length in the spec. Okay. All right. Any questions for Scott on this one then? Okay, any new objection to approving it? All right, approved, cool. We got all three, all three. So let's see, closed. Uh, hold on, can't type today. Close with no action. All right, cool. All right, that's technically the end of the agenda. Are there any other topics people would like to bring up? All right, in that case, before we jump over to the interop call, let me just do the attendee list for the folks who do not wish to stay on. Um, Remy, we did hear you. Colin, are you there? I am, hey Doug. Hello, uh, Hamid. I'm here. Excellent, and Lance? I'm here. Excellent, anybody else that I missed for the roll call? I think I got everybody. All right, in that case, if you're not interested in the interrupt for a number of seconds, you are free to go. Have a good rest of your day. And we'll start up the interrupt call in 30 seconds or so. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Bye. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. So, um, <clears throat> it seems to me based upon our, our previous discussions about things like maybe we shouldn't tackle importing and exporting or synchronization between discovery endpoints. I was thinking that maybe the circular one, while really, really cool sounding, might be a little bit more advanced than they want to tackle first time out. So a little bit before the call here, I started writing up, um, a very simple user flow here. Um, so user queries discovery endpoint with the services, they select one. Um, they, maybe they'll, they'll only look for the one that supports HTTP push delivery. Um, they subscribe to it. They verify the subscription looks right by doing HTTP get to the subscription. Um, they verify that they get at least one event because the, the service is gonna be required to send at least one event every 30 seconds. So they verify they get at least one. Um, the user, when they're all done, they can delete the subscription and then they verify they don't get any more events, ignoring any possible things that are already in flight. But I was thinking if we can <clears throat> at least do this simple flow, at least test, I think, some of the basic stuffs, or stuff in the spec. And it does do discovery spec a little and a little bit of the subscription spec. If we wanted them, we can go a little further and say, okay, let's start adding some filtering possibly updating the subscription and get, if we really ambitious, some non HTTP plus push event delivery. But that was just some initial thoughts that I had because um, I felt like we needed to, to fill out the, the document a little bit better in terms of what the actual scenario is going to be. Um, possibly an, an easier, instead of trying to set up some sort of circular dependency, we, we make it a star map where every other subscribe, every other endpoint that is participating uh, aggregates up every other participant. And you, you get loops that way anyway, right? Because if if I'm importing you and you're importing me, that's that's a loop and we have to figure out deduplications. I, so personally, I'm not necessarily against it other than I got nervous based upon our previous conversations about whether import is fully defined yet in the spec. If, if you... I think it doesn't need to be though, right? I, I think we really need to pull back all of the management APIs that have been added 
and and just wait and see because I think that's that should be up to the implementation detail. I don't think the specification needs to define how to uh, aggregate stuff. We just need to talk about what the endpoint provides and what the data means. So help me understand though, <clears throat> in this model where there's this aggregation going on, how does information get moved from one discovery endpoint to another? I, I think it's an implementation choice of whatever is going to aggregate stuff, right? Like it, this is a this is a feature that the downstreams implement and they to the to the upstreams they look like just another consumer asking for the discovery endpoint but to them like to to the down to the oh, sorry I, I always get the upstreams and downstreams <laughs> so the um for the upstream service that downstream thing so the the aggregate looks just like another uh client to it it's, okay so, he, so he's just doing a series of gets it's just doing gets okay uh, now the the thing that's interesting that doesn't have to be written down in the spec but could be in some kind of primer is that if you are a discovery endpoint you can also implement the the uh, the subscription api for the catalog content of the discovery api which is very tricky uh, and it doesn't have to be specified right like that's just something that you can do if you interpolate between the discovery endpoint spec and the the uh, subscription API spec. Can you do me a sorry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I think I think what you're describing there sounds sounds nice. And it certainly would be easier than a, than I think what I was had in my head. Um, can you actually just replace this section with what you sort of described there? Sure. sure at yeah, some point. I can do that. Okay. Can you paste the link to this doc? I, I think I've lost it. Yeah, it's in the main agenda doc, but let me put it into, hello. There's the... Thanks. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Now, <clears throat> so Scott's going to replace this with his simplified version, which is good. Does this stuff sound okay, or does this stuff not sound okay? <laughs> I think it's good to... Yeah, for me, it's good to try to do that to make it more concrete. <laughs> okay. Uh, and to kind of uh, follow on uh, uh, Scott's thoughts, like uh, that was what I discussed a bit yesterday with you, but my idea is that maybe I'm wrong and I would be happy to be correct if that's the case, yeah. is in a way we kind of, the way I see it, is if I had something in the middle that will basically use a discovery service to add and subscribe to several services and then give me the ability to have one main discovery in the middle that basically link to new service, then as an IT admin, I can add new services into it. And for my whole company, they will only that gateway discovery service that I to all the other platform through all we define and make them available without having to think about anything like basically just have like the new github uh, and that's the kind of that i think it spawned a new just project that is called i don't know cloud events gateway or something like that that will then have to implement subscription and uh, and the discovery service but that's my thinking of implementing the whole spec yeah, I, I, plus one. I think that's that's exactly what I'm thinking. We don't have to specify what the gateway API is, though, because that's an implementation of the two specifications following the rules that we've set up, right? Like our focus should be in interoperability, not the details of how to implement that the the aggregation pieces, because that's completely dependent. And I think that the those aggregates need to be free to make decisions around, like. Maybe they do want to change the epoch, or maybe they don't expose the epoch they got from downstreams, and they save it in some sort of cache and rewrite it. Right. So yeah. then you, they could do paging and, and a bunch of other fancy stuff uh, as an internal detail, but and then authorization basically. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, so I'm like uh, I'm eager to start 
I don't know if there is already a project that does that, but I think it will help me at least get really into the full create work if I initiate some kind of uh, project like that. But uh, I mean, if the work already exists somewhere, uh, I don't. I should not do it, I guess. <laughs> but well, uh, what language is your main language? I, I like. I really don't care. I'm not saying that Go is my favorite. If I had to learn Go and do it in Go, then <laughs> I can learn it. Like usually we're... now, I do lots of TypeScript, but uh, I'm open. I mean, I think fuck. we need a TypeScript version. So, so the point of the interrupt demo that's happening in November is that we would like to be able to run through this simple flow and then maybe run through more complex thing with uh, several implementations that read from the spec that implemented what the spec said to, to validate that the spec is actually uh, feasible and doable and implement implementable in several languages. Yeah, and my, my goal, like at least when I thought this week was like, even though I would like to have just a small React or whatever you, UI framework you prefer, but like uh, a small UI that is basically for a human to really see those uh, endpoints uh, a little bit nicer than uh, just uh, APIs. Um, and that's basically the beginning. Like the way I see it, but uh, like, I don't know if I'm hijacking this meeting, uh, if that's okay, you can tell me. Uh, is like, I would love to have a UI where basically I say, okay, I have a new ser like service that I know that is on that URL, just it is the discovery point and just import all the services. Then I have a third one that is whatever language it is, I don't really care because then I'm just gonna use like the discovery uh, API. And then they, they subscribe automatically and then you can just come and subscribe to this gateway that will basically get all the information from the other services and aggregate, like and act as an aggregate. But I think this will be super concrete to me, and uh, I would really understand what we are trying to do. While in the last months, I was a bit more confused. But again, it's maybe just like I, I can take the blame without any issue on that. Yeah, uh, I think that's where we're headed, but we need to validate the spec first. So. The goal is that by before the end of the year, we have an RC pitched and then, and then folks can start working on actual like implementations of this thing that do real things. But okay, so maybe I can start in advance and, and you say it's for November, correct? The demo you want to show? Yeah, yeah, this interop event, Doug is like no November two. That's the date. Yeah. November two. <laughs> it's coming up fast, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Should then I... we break break this down into let's say some tasks so that we can start coding on this. Well, you you code your own version. We're gonna do an interrupt. Ah, okay. Like you, yeah. the, the task is to you independently go and read the spec, implement what it says, and make sure it makes sense. All right. So one thing it does is makes you read the text and see if it's uh, all correct. And the other one is make you implement it to make sure it's like technically feasible. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and, 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 and in other interrupts, we did have different people uh, signed up to do different parts of the overall demo. Like they, that way everybody didn't have to implement everything. Mm -hmm. In this particular case though, I do think it'd be useful if everybody did implement everything, meaning they, they input a discovery endpoint, they, interrupt, they, they provided a service that you can subscribe to. They, everybody wrote their own client. And that way okay. we can test a given, you know, an end by end yeah. matrix. <laughs> I think it's good. Like, so yeah, yeah. I, my vision there is there is like the basic discovery API that I was trying to put in the SDK just because when you do a simple service, I think you have value to be able to like a basic discovery service. And then for the whole interrupt, I think it has value to get the more complex aggregator that they have in mind. I'll try. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> we'll see. But uh, I I'll try to implement something for next week. Uh, okay. S Scott, just to go back, since, you, since you're going to revamp this section here, uh, I, th I think I understand the mental model that you, that you described in terms of the upstream, downstream stuff and, like, and stuff like that. Um, 
one thing I'd like to you consider, not necessarily for this call, but as you write this up, is to explain how you see it working when you have another party involved who's doing the gets against both the upstream and the downstream, and then the same service comes from both guys, hmm. right? And and the epoch values don't match or something like that. And you know, what if one or both of those of those upstreams to that third party guy update it, right? Which one does the guy use? That that kind of stuff. Right. I, I'd like to understand how you how you see all that playing out. So that's exactly why I was saying that the, the epoch needs to basically be immutable as it goes it becomes aggregated down uh, to different services. I would expect that uh, so it's so hard. Oh man, isn't there like a I can draw on your screen or something? Oh, I don't know, can you? Well, I hmm. You can, you just go to the view options and click on annotate and then ask Delph to put a white screen. You request, annotate, okay, here we go. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> now I'm worried. <laughs> oh gosh. That go on a blank screen, that would be <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, so let's say we have this situation we just talked about. Uh, Hey, I'm gonna this. hold on, hold on. Doo, 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 doo. I, well, you know, you gotta give me a break. I'm using a trackpad and I'm trying no, to draw. No, no. I, want, I, want to get rid of, I want to get rid of the text. So there you go. It's a blank right, screen. So let's see, to make it clear that the arrow of direction is where the request is coming from. So, so C here is the, well, maybe we'll call it X because that's a little easier to draw. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so X is the, the final consumer. Mm -hmm. And it's making a aggregate request to A and B because it has a bunch of other users that are going to aggregate from it or, or this describe or ask for subscriptions or whatever, right? Uh -huh. uh, and it sees there's there's a, a foo. Oh my goodness! This is, oh my goodness! Wait, hold on. I have a map. This is going to be great. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> okay, we got a we got a foo here. And okay. its epoch is one. And a foo down here with an epoch of two. So when, when X sees A's subscription list and sees the epoch of one, it says, okay, cool, I'll store that. And then it goes and calls B and says, okay, oh, you also have a foo and your epoch is two? That's more better. I'm going to save that one and I'm gonna drop what A gave me. So now I have everything that B had, I have everything that A gave B, but B could have filtered some of things from A out, right? So maybe maybe A provides foo one, foo two, foo three, but B is only aggregating foo one. But now X has all of B's catalog, all of the foo catalog, but the updated version because B doesn't, oh, Sorry, this goes the other way. B is making a request to A. So B is out of date and X is now more up to date than B, but that's okay because now we know how to reconcile the what the source of truth from A is around its source, its service foods. And we can compare that to B's service food, but it, it breaks down if B rewrites the epoch. Right, that's right. And that, right, because you, you... <laughs> A couple of minutes ago, you said something that you did not repeat, and I was waiting for you to repeat it, which was B is not allowed to touch the epoch that he got from A. Well, it I think it can make that choice, right? So let's say I say my service X is actually firewalled, and I don't, it's a not working as intended if anything re reaches around out of this little safety box. I'm going to rewrite inside of the aggregate X, I'm gonna rewrite every epoch and subscription API because I am the proxy. And I think that's okay too. But it, it works only if you understand that X is going to be the proxy for a bunch of other things outside of the bounds of the, the subscription contract. But that's an implementation detail of X and its environment that it exists in because it doesn't want all the X1s and X x2s 
to reach outside of the cluster and talk to B directly. This is a bad, bad. Well, yeah, that, well, that's what I was going to say is, yes, as long as you guarantee that that no one ever talks to X and A and B at the same time, sure, you can do that kind of stuff. But I'm mm -hmm. worried about the original case where he does talk to multiple people. Right. Well, right. I, I and, think and, that and, that's not and, something we can control. Well, right. that's what I'm, yeah, we just need to specify that. I, we just need to write it down. I mean, don't have to solve it on this call here, but those are the kind of things that I worry about because I'm not sure you can always guarantee that X is the end of the chain because B may have thought he was the end of the chain and he's wrong. Oh, there's an arrow. Look at this thing. <laughs> oh, so that's funny. Interesting. Okay. Um, anyway, like I said, you don't, we don't have to solve it now. Just something to, to, to think about writing down as you start to fill out this section here. Yeah, I mean, so this is kind of why I, I think that the, the whole management API probably needs to get pulled from the spec because it, it complicates this situation and makes us have to figure it out. Uh -huh. And I think that the, that the push-based uh, management API probably should be an implementation detail of a particular uh, implementation instead of specified by the cloud event spec. Okay, we, we can definitely see how it plays out. But I think I think I think we need to see something written down bef uh, as an alternative before we start ripping stuff out. Yeah. Okay. Let's. So. Okay. Let's pause on trying to delete all of Doug's work uh, and totally interrupt <laughs> them. But do you, you need to make me implement all your uh, crazy crud? No. 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 That, that notice. Notice the stuff I wrote up here does not do anything with the crud. Okay. I purposely did not even touch that because I agree with you. I, that stuff very likely is going to get pulled. And I have no problem with pulling it. I just want to make sure we have an understanding of how that synchronization that you just drew on the board there is going to play out, even if it's all done through gets. I'm okay with yeah. that. I just want to understand oh. it. All right. Yeah. So I'll draw one more thing. Oh, there uh, we go. Hold on. The, the revamp okay. idea. So you got, you got A, and you've got B, and you've got C, and you've got D and you have the demo X, right? And I think it'd be really interesting if this goes and tries to go and uh, ask for and subscribe to things from all of these consumers, but these things also aggregate, <laughs> right? And then, you know, watch me draw this for like an hour, but <laughs> this becomes very complicated, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't subscribe from X. Oh gosh! So you get the the uh, it, the complicated hub and spoke. It kind of looks like one of the machine learning models. Yeah. So instead of instead of the simple case of you have to have a coordinated ring where it the data flows like this and it ends up you always end up in these little eddies where. Mm -hmm you know, the, the, and then if you add another one and so it's connected like this, they're all talking to each other and you, and by happenstance, you can talk to one and get all of the aggregates. I don't know how real this, but so I, I doubt this is a real scenario. I see real scenarios looking more like this, like a tree. But the reason I'm concerned about the little eddies is because I think once the tree gets big enough, you start to do things like this. Mm -hmm. And then that makes, makes me nervous because yeah. that, if you flatten this little connection, that's a ring. Mm -hmm. And then epoch becomes very important. Yeah, well, your entire premise that, that if you, if you get an epoch from somebody upstream, you're not allowed to touch it. That may help solve that problem. May. It, it may. Yeah. I think you're not supposed to touch it. And I, I think you're also not, so, but you, I think we should allow the case of a complete proxy where it rewrites all of the data and the subscription endpoints and everything else because it wants to be the delegate. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Anish, your hands up. Uh I'm just a bit confused. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So it's like A, B, and C, for example, were they the producers in this case, and X becomes a consumer, or everybody is a producer and everybody is a consumer? I mean, what sort of model are we talking about? So that I, I live in a middleware world where there's mm -hmm. 
there's a cluster and there's uh, maybe some functions going on and they produce events and they also consume events and they subscribe to events. Uh, but that may be just one in a, a series of clusters that are connected through some sort of means. And the discovery and subscription APIs are, are what I'm trying to get those clusters to link together so that they can uh, pull down what's available to, in the universe of events to be subscribing to and then aggregate up subscriptions that apply to that particular endpoint. So that's, that's a fair thing to tackle down, at least in terms of distributed system for sure. But uh, where I got confused is like, how can, how, how does it, I mean, how does the collision happen? So in, in what oh. scenario is it like the epochs, for example, are gonna be mutated by, because they have to work on the same object, right? If they are trying to mutate it and every piece in the puzzle or basically A, B or C individually, they have their own discovery specific, uh, their own discovery endpoint, right? So that means they have their own catalog of events in this case. Right, the, the, the um, epoch came about because I, my first prototype of this, I implemented a ring and I implemented a very simple, uh, like I think 10 second sync timer. And it very quickly showed that based on timing, I could get a bubble of incorrect data uh, flowing through each node where it goes and it, uh, it propagates the wrong data down and then aggregates up the correct data and replaces the wrong data. But you have this little bubble of incorrect data being synchronized between all the clients. Uh, and then it gets replaced by what's behind it because there's no way to compare it. And so um, that, that's, where, that's where Epoch came from. Uh, Remy, your, your hands up. Uh, yeah, uh, it's just, um, if I may draw. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I open the world for everyone. Right? Yeah, it's just, uh, that's the first time. So I click on annotate and then I can draw and you all see. Wow, nice. Hey, there so we go. My vision was, I, I'm not sure I'm gonna do better than Scott there. Um, if I have A, then uh, you'll have B and all that, of course. My, my, uh, GW, like my gateway, the way I see it is more like I manage security for Nuxio, so like I'm probably really uh, focused on security. Is like I would ask them to subscribe to all of those, so then my internal employee will only subscribe to this uh, gateway. And if B needs to see A, basically the way I will see it is I will ask B to subscribe to my gateway because I, I probably need to filter some of the A events because I don't want, B, like, let's say it's GitHub on that side and I don't know, it's uh, my IDS on the B or my CI on the B side. Uh, A will start sending me all kind of events and I, I don't want B to see some private events from GitHub. So this way I will have better control if it goes through a gateway. So then I won't have those kind of token and. Uh, and that's why I was talking about like kind of gateways or, or aggregators is just because uh, if I have lots of connection between like A and B, A and C and AD and things like that, the way to manage permission in between might become uh, harder for me. But maybe I, I'm wrong. But that's what I have in my brain currently. Any comments on that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, I think so. I, I think the situation that uh, is implementation specific is if you have C down here and it's talking to gateway and it talks to B, I think in this, in the environment, this is incorrect, right? Like, C yeah, correct. Yeah, like I will go to the team that manage C, say, okay, like you don't, don't go to B directly because like it's not manageable for me in a good way, like because then uh, I have too many uh, flows that goes everywhere and to explain to like uh, our compliance officer, it's gonna be hard. Yeah, I think you can solve that with auth here and firewalling. Yeah, so you're C correct. is not possible. Yeah, yeah, and that, that means then the concrete uh, is more of using that. So that's why I really want the gateway product uh, and because without it, I don't see how we'll do a good implementation in my company. Yeah, absolutely. 
And okay. I, I think that's that's why the gateway needs to be able to write uh, epochs and things. But yeah, and even like filtering capabilities, maybe like uh, with some JSON rules or something to basically say this message can go through or not. And yeah. Okay, uh, Klaus, your hands up. Yes. Yeah, so um, two remarks. <laughs> so, uh, first, I think we might want to have a closer look at DNS because they are doing this and um, something more. Uh, I wonder if it's really a good idea to uh, do this via the same API as the discovery itself, because you will also have to deal with different kinds of um, authorization models for those gateways and for consumers, I, I would suppose at least. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're, and that, that's right. But like, so for me, it's easier because C will be like, let's say it's an internal team, then they will use our internal authorization, like mm -hmm. our software systems and things like that. While on GitHub, I have like my uh, application that is like put on the organization, which I don't want C to be aware of, but like we need authorization. And that's why, like earlier, when we talk about authorization, Kind of eluding the subject i think it's still really important because uh coming from security like we don't live in an open world <laughs> so <laughs> we don't like we need to have a way to close it down so maybe we should yeah. also but the the gateway again needs some kind of token then to access a and b so correct yeah um back to dns so in, in dns you have um servers that are authoritative for certain uh, zones and so this fully distributed approach I think is, is really hard I mean in, in distributed systems that you always reach the point when you have some central component um, so that's why I wonder if this this fully distributed approach what Scott was mentioning before is really feasible um, another thing uh, um, I wonder if, if also something like a document format for exchanging events between discovery endpoints might be a solution so that you don't use the usual discovery API, but something like a, a document format where you can have a well-defined bundle of uh, events you, you transfer to another uh, discovery endpoint. Uh, elaborate a little. Why, why do you think that? I'm, I, the, the, it's a bit like the zone transfer you you might have in, in DNS or yeah. I'm just I'm just no. What I'm what I, what I got stuck on was what's the difference between an event describing a change versus just doing a get to get the information. Why why would an event be different than just the metadata itself? No, it didn't say an event. So what what I mean is, well that. A could provide some some document containing the um, services or events um, it's making discoverable, and uh, then the gateway could then retrieve that document. And um, you, you don't run into all these uh, authorization issues. And yeah, more more in the in the spirit of um, yeah async api open api and those standards well, hmm. for, for me doing the get on the api or, because at the end even if you have the definition so for what i understand the document will be kind of the definition so an export but when you subscribe because the gateway still need to subscribe to then provide the right events and i okay, so i see I see the gateway not only from the discovery part, I, but if you only take the scope of the discovery, I think you can do exactly what you said. But I was think for me, the gateway should also provide, because of the authorization, more the, the aggregator of the cloud events. It should not only be the discovery mm -hmm. part. It should, because I agree, if it's just a discovery okay. part, then it's just a definition. So you could load up the definition almost without speaking to A or B at all. If so you, I could. I could imagine still to have the a proxy mode, so to speak, for the discovery API. But if you really want to transfer the whole discovery data to, to make it available somewhere else, I don't think the API is the right way. Yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. the proxy is, I think you're right. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, Simon, your hands up. 
Yeah, so I also see the problems with um, distributed systems, which have so many relations between them to sync it. And one approach we are currently evaluating is to make a distinction between aggregators and providers basically of such information. So in that picture, A and B could be relatively stupid and just implement expose basically what in a declarative way, what events, cloud events they expose. And then we might have an aggregator like the gateway in here, which basically fetches those information from all sources it knows about. And then this is the central entry point. Yeah. Um, there oh, could sorry. be more aggregators than one, but you won't have that many. Um, so it's more manageable. Okay. If, uh, if I mean, sir, because if you're all right. Yeah, that's, but that's why, like, if you look on the, the way I first implemented the discovery was exactly that the SDK had like a simple, uh, not intelligent discovery system to just uh, publish what it was uh, emitting as cloud events and yeah, services. Exactly. And then my second thought is I need to have that gateway because like I need something that is way more clever, but that, uh, and then as a developer of A, it's easy because within a, a few lines of code, you just have your discovery service running. And then in the gateway, I have my, uh, my team who will basically connect all those small services. And then we can just publish to the whole company, which sit on the C side, uh, the, all the events that they can consume. Yeah, that was also, we had a very similar motivation behind that. Also because we had a lot of, we have a lot of, yeah, systems which would provide events uh, and we want to keep the effort to provide discovery as low as possible and then just add all the extra functionality in a single place or maybe two places, but a very limited um, amount of places. Okay. Uh John, your hands up. Yeah, so there's, <laughs> there's so many things going on. And I, <laughs> so I apologize for not keeping up with the discovery stuff in general. But there's, there's, there's like, so with, with, let me go back to this epoch issue, right? If you're, if you're going to allow rewriting, you now have identity problems, right? So that, that's, you know, I think what Scott, he had to leave, but the, you know, the, the issue of creating a, a bubble behind a gateway is if somebody wants to create a bubble, that, that's up to them, but then you have all these restrictions, right? You yeah. also have all sorts of security problems when you're now basically inducing a man in the middle, right? So it's not just for authentication and authorization, it, it's, it, it's integrity, it's trust, it's it's all these additional features. So it's not just the issue of, well, are we allowing people or not, or whatever, however you want to say it in, in specification speak, but like, what, what's the identity? Like, are we changing the identity of events coming from A and B in the gateway, such that the gateway is the authoritative truth, right? Or are we pretending the gateway doesn't exist? But if you're adding functionality and you're basically changing the semantics of things, that's fundamentally a different thing. So you like so there it, it becomes this is part of what induces all of this messiness that people are talking about. Is you you've got multiple dimensions that are that are now in conflict that you don't have any ability to tease apart because like all bets are off, right? Either you say the the you know C is talking to the gateway, and it only knows about the gateway, and so the the catalog, this aggregated catalog coming from the gateway, is the source of truth. So you can think about the gateway as changing the reference frame of the universe relative to its consumers, right? So C in this case, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. Does that so make sense? Yes, but I would argue that um, the aggregator and the gateway can be two different concepts. And I so totally, you could have an. I, I totally yeah. agree. 
right? But that's what I'm that's what I'm getting to, right? You, you yeah. have to, we have to start teasing this apart, and the, and the fundamental building block is the notion of well, what is identity? And that goes back to I forget who mentioned DNS, right? The notion of authoritative versus you know um, local uh, recursive resolvers. There, there's the right. We're adding complexity, and we're not adding the capability, or at least so far, what we're talking about is not adding the capability and the expectation management around. Okay, well, how do I resolve these different complexities that we've we've allowed for? Uh, for me, the way, like, because there is an intermediary that is defined on cloud event, so you can just, like, be the one passing the message. I will consider that in that case, like, I'm not a big fan of rewriting. Uh, I, I suppose if you rewrite, it's it's not really a rewrite, then you create a new event based on the previous event. But yep. for me, it should not be a modification. So basically, for C, is either I provide them like a com.github event, which is basically what they will find from GitHub documentation, and then I don't do anything. Or like my company is Nuxeo. If it's Nuxeo, then it's going to be Nuxeo.github, and then it's a completely different event that might be a like of the GitHub, or it's something completely different. That's my own decision to transform it. If I transform it, then the gateway becomes like the source of the event because then that means it creates new type of events that is specific to my company but um so this but i'm really not a big fan of like rewriting the message without because as you said even for authentic like uh integrity if you start signing the message uh, it's not gonna work anyway so right. so if you yeah. look at the the, the the work these days in you know whatever i hate the term but zero trust right networking this this just like more and more problems um, that, that we're adding. So my my concern is that if, if we're going to, you know, open up these kinds of things like epoch rewriting and those kinds of things, I mean, from the standard perspective, we can take a totally neutral perspective and say, hey, if you do that, then that, that's up to you. We don't we do, we don't guarantee anything. But if we take that loose of position, then now we're we're basically opening the floodgates to interop problems by not specifying enough about well what should be done what could be done what's you know these best practices of you know if if the identity is ultimately github then whatever your gateway is 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 really a proxy so then are we specifying enough uh, enough grip in the system to pass through credentials and whatever we need to do so that it's it's actually a secure uh, or securable proxy versus a new source of truth that's doing whatever it wants to do. Yeah, okay. I, I like I like the fact you focused on identity because that's an interesting aspect that I was kind of wondering about is if we're going to allow one of these nodes like the gateway to in essence not just be a pass through for the epoch but it's going to allow itself to set the epoch value then I, if i understand you correctly you're almost implying that if he's going to take ownership of the epoch value then he needs to almost set a new identity in other words a new guid for yeah. Yeah. that service yeah, definitely. Right? Right. and i and i like that approach because that that could solve a lot of the problems right it, and so if you yeah so if, yeah, yeah if you start mucking with the epoch then you now become the source of truth this guy so yeah give it a new identity and then it, it's no longer the same thing is where you got this information from. They are not two yeah. separate resources. Or yeah, separate because resources. it's yeah. either you proxy or you create your own yeah. based on something like a, another source of truth if you yeah. want, but it's yeah. a new one. Yeah, and if you're a proxy, then you're not allowed to touch the epoch. Yeah, yeah. yeah if you're a proxy, you're a proxy. Like, I don't yeah. like my proxy to <laughs> change. Because that kind of model I can understand to wrap my head around very simply. It may not be satisfy every single use case, but at least it's something I can wrap my head around. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then the, the security building, right? That gives you a better building block for the, you know, end-to-end -end authentication and security. Like, oh, hey, I have to authenticate to the proxy for it to give me a channel outward. Yeah, right? it, yeah. Versus, it, uh, I'm authenticating to GitHub. Um, you know, that's a pass through a proxy versus a a uh, a rewriting new source of truth aggregator that I just aggregate to it and I only see its catalog and I don't even, uh, you know, uh, yeah. know about GitHub. Like, yeah. because my use case will be like, uh, my engineers will be on C 
I don't want them to even uh, have to worry about how we authenticate with GitHub if I want to change that. And basically, the connection between A and the gateway will be managed by the, I would say, the IT team. And then as an engineer, I see you just connect to the gateway with a normal authentication, like what they are used to do. And they don't have to manage that because like, of the the bigger the company, the more system. So it goes to A to uh, Z, I would say. Yeah. Well, I and, mean, you have all the politics, right? All the politi political problems, right? The yeah. Cus you know, big customers demanding punch throughs one way or the other and all of that kind of stuff. So there's, there's plenty of external nightmares that we can add on top. But if we don't give them the right building blocks, it's, it, it can't possibly work in any sort of secure manner, right? And certainly, you know, uh, at Ariba, uh, part of SAP, we ran into this all the time, like literally huge customers trying to say, oh, we, we need access to your backend database directly. It's like, no. Yeah, <laughs> I know, you know that when you, have, you know, <laughs> when you have a Saudi prince calling, um, you know, the president of the company, shit happens. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So this has been a wonderful discussion. It is a slight tangent from the interop. Um, however, it is all good. If somebody, what, why am I still in this darn mode? Oh, I'm in annotation mode. If somebody wants to write up the stuff we talked about here as a proposal for the spec itself, I would love to see that. But I know everybody's busy with other stuff and we're focused on the interop, which is not going to touch, I think, this stuff anyway, except for maybe Scott's. Uh, if you want, I think I draw this one. So if you want me to put it on paper, like it was really good to have this conversation because I was not sure if I was right or wrong, to be honest with the yeah. group. It seemed that this idea is not completely stupid, which I'm happy No, if, if, you want to, if you want to write down the idea, whether it's part of the spec or just as a separate doc that people can iterate on and, and brainstorm on, and then eventually it leads into something for the spec, I think that'd be great. So um, we have also this discovery primer, perhaps. True. Use cases yeah. and scenarios. Perhaps it's also something for that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and my goal is so uh, for me, A and B was supposed to be the small PR I did in the SDK, like uh, for discovery service. But uh, Gateway is clearly another open source project that I can start on my own repository for now. But uh, I think it will help uh, explaining that. So. I can work on that. And definitely for if we do an interrupt, I think it would be nice to have at least some draft on that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we need to talk about? I think we have a plan. How do I get rid of that annotations? Hold on. <laughs> um, can I actually clear it? Oh, you can't, but the people who have drawn, they can. Oh, you there can. There we actually. go. I can, I can Yes, I, I have power. Okay. Um, Done. Uh, I have one favor to ask, of course. I mean, the scenario what we are talking about in terms of interop is, is a very, very technical scenario. We probably got to add some sort of story behind that. And I think you're the best person for that. Wait, are you, are you talking about this stuff down here, right? Not, no, I no. assume this one's easy, right? Yeah. I, I mean, okay. these are like very easy to implement, but we got to tell like a pitch behind that. That why, I mean, at least when we're going to give a demo about this, right? Yes, yes, we have to. Yes, we have to present it in a real in a real world scenario, not just hey, you can A can talk to B. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. <laughs> yeah, and yes. that's I think you're the best person for that right now. Oh sure, <laughs> sign me up for work. I appreciate that. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Yes, uh, I we need we need to get people to actually start coding first. That's the hard part. So, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll yeah, I agree. That. We'll go get there. Okay, all right. We got people starting to take off now. All right, anything else? Last last chance. All right. In that case, we are finally done. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll talk again next week. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye.